The biggest innovation in astrophotography technology is finally here. What initially, believe it or not, began as an April Fool's joke is finally a reality. Guiding, imaging, telescope control, and live stacking all from one unit. In this review video, we're going to check out if this camera is still a joke or if it's actually worth the hype. Let's check it out. Personally, I had some big doubts about this camera when I first heard about it, especially because of the guide sensor. Previously, what I had believed was that the guide scope was supposed to be about two thirds of the focal length of your actual telescope. So would having the guide scope at the same focal length of the main telescope have a negative effect on the guiding? That was a question I had. Also, astrophotography YouTuber The Space Koala had already done a review video on this camera. And I recall her mentioning that it's not a good match when used with PC due to the fact that it takes a long time to download exposures directly from your camera to your PC. But if anybody has already seen that video, they need to keep in mind that, first of all, if it's already using the ASI Air program, why would you want to use it on PC when you can just connect it to your phone? And second of all, since it has such a large sensor, you can't expect it to have the same amount of download time as you would from a smaller camera sensor like the 533 or the 5A5. A larger resolution size means that a longer download speed is to be expected. To take my images tonight, I'm gonna to be pairing this camera with my Ascar 71F Flat Field Refractor Telescope. This telescope is a good match for this camera due to its 490 millimeter focal length. This camera has a pixel size of 3.76, which is ideal for telescopes with focal lengths ranging from 400 millimeters to 1000 millimeters. So this camera is probably aimed more at an audience who is looking more for a portable setup than a larger fixed setup. Of course, you could always use it for a larger setup, but more than likely that's what they aimed for. As soon as I received the notification saying that the camera arrived at my home, I immediately left and unboxed it. Something I really appreciate that ZWO does that companies like SV Boney don't do very often is that they actually ship their cameras with all kinds of adapters and cables you'd need for the camera to be attached to your telescope. The ASI 2600MC Air has three 12 volt ports. One of those is needed to be able to power the camera and the other two ports can be used to power your accessories such as your mount and a dew heater. This allows for easier cable management since I also don't have to use a separate guide scope or ASI Air anymore. It also has four USB ports for accessory and mount control and of course, the USB-C port for data transfer to your computer for post-processing. Once I had my telescope and camera connected, I brought my telescope outside. I will say that this camera is significantly heavier than ZWO's other cameras, so once you have everything connected, you're going to want to make sure that you rebalance your telescope. I wasn't really sure if it would function exactly like the ASI Air, so I had some doubts that it would even be able to run my telescope mount. Thankfully though, it runs all of the same telescope drivers as a normal ASI Air. So if you don't own a ZWO mount, although you won't be able to use the Bluetooth control functionality, you can still control your mount with ease through the camera. And to my surprise, like the C-Star, this camera can talk to you. Imaging, the... they talk now. Okay, they talk now, that's pretty cool. As I mentioned before, I had my doubts about how well it would guide, especially because it's at the same focal length of my telescope. But to my surprise, the calibration actually worked more accurately and faster than it did with my normal guide scope and ASI Air. And the guiding was near perfect, which is something I had never been able to achieve with my normal setup. All of the functions of the ASI 2600 MC Air work exactly the same as an ASI Air Plus or Pro, including polar alignment, focusing, live stacking, mount control, everything. It even has a built-in dew heater to protect your camera sensor while imaging. Now, before we actually do any imaging with this telescope to give you an example of how well it does, I'd also like to mention that this camera has 256 gigabytes of internal storage. So you don't need to worry about running out of storage space super fast, even though the camera has a 26 megapixel quality. Also, it comes with an IR cut coating on the camera center itself, so you don't have to worry about unwanted light reaching your image. As a test for the image quality, I wanted to choose a deep sky object that not very many people image, something more abstract. So I avoided deep sky objects like Andromeda and the Heart Nebula and went for something more out of the box. I'm going to get a couple nights of integration time on this deep sky object using this camera and once I do, let me know what you think in the comments below.
So to conclude, is this camera actually worth the hype? I believe it is. Thinking back to when the ASI 2600 MC Pro was already priced at $2,000 and now it has a built-in guide sensor and a built-in ASI Air at the same price, the only thing it's missing at this point is a built-in filter wheel. Imagine that. Let me know what you think about this camera in the comments below. Personally, I think it's a great addition to make your astrophotography rig reach its full potential. And even though it's a little bit pricey, it's definitely worth the price. If you enjoyed this video and at least found it informative, please leave a like and subscribe to help support the channel. And as always, I wish you clear skies.